Today I'm going to review the Roken Micro Touch. This is the first step in my search for the best truly wireless earbuds. I have more earbuds to test, but personally I don't think that these are the ones for me. My name is Matt from Real World Review, and please, let me explain. Before we go any farther, these are in-ear canal buds, just like all the other buds. In comparison, earbuds like AirPods just sit in your ear, which doesn't help for noise insulation. Now that we got that out of the way, let's move on. The sound is not the best on Android. I thought that this was just how the earbuds sound, but it really sounds way better on iOS. There is a crackling sound when the volume is 4 fifths or higher, but that's only on Android phones. I tested this on the OnePlus 6T, Pixel XL, S9 Plus, it's all the same. iOS sounds fine regardless of the volume, and I tested that on an iPhone 6, iPhone 7, and an iPhone 10. With Android, there's a slight delay when pausing and playing music, and even in some videos you notice it. There is an even smaller delay on the iPhone, which makes it better than Android devices. Also, there's a big enough delay to where I can't even edit audio with these, but honestly, I kind of expected that. There were times where the audio would drop out of one ear for half a second, or the audio would move from one side. It kind of sounds like it gets hit by a wave, and then goes back to the left, and then goes to the center. Really, it kind of seems like it's done on purpose. The touch controls are so difficult to use. I couldn't get anything to work except for the assistant on Android. After using them for a couple weeks, I got used to it, but it's still kind of awkward. On iOS, pause, play, next, and back work fine, just as long as the buds aren't resting on the ear. It's actually kind of funny because they react more when you shake your ear rather than just tapping the buds. I highly recommend just using the device to push controls, especially since there aren't any volume controls on the buds. Having a little click button would have been the best, but I see why they went this route. The EQ is nice, if that's how you say it. The bass has a nice kick to it, and overall sounds really good. I tried using these while driving, and it wasn't enough. Also, I don't recommend doing that in the first place. There were times where I tried to click the steering wheel controls, but obviously nothing happened. I just needed more sound. If you're listening to music in a quiet environment, like at work or at home, these will be loud enough for you. Using these while driving or on a train will not be enough. And forget using these on a plane. Then again, I do see people using AirPods on planes and trains, so it may be loud enough for you, but it's definitely not loud enough for me. There is a decent amount of noise insulation because these do go in your ear, rather than just sitting there like AirPods. After doing some research, I figured out why the static issue happens on Android devices. I learned that these buds actually lack aptX, but it still doesn't really make too much sense as to why it sounds bad on Android. When using these with an iPhone, it's just as loud as Android phones, except for the quality is a lot better. The fit is kind of awkward. They are small, but thick. They fit in your ear nicely, and there's no way that these can really fall out, but the bud pushes against your ear and kind of hurts after a while. Maybe my ears are just small, but these aren't comfortable to me. I guess the good thing about the size is that they go in your ear and out of your ear really easily. They obviously are very lightweight, and there's something liberating about that. No cable, no worries. One other thing I want to point out is that they have a very low water resistance certification, so I don't recommend using these in the water or working out if you sweat a lot. My brother had an older version of these that have the same water resistance, but they failed because he works out with them. Also, I've read many reviews on these and other water-resistant headphones and earbuds, and they mainly fail when sweat is introduced. I find it really annoying that these companies advertise that these buds are perfect for working out when they're really not. The pairing process is stupid easy. Like, it's crazy. Literally, just take the right bud out first, go into the Bluetooth, select Roken, done. Even switching phones is easy. From here, you just remove the buds from your phone, the buds will say that they're in pairing mode, and then you pair with the other device. Crazy simple. Taking the buds out of the case when they're already paired is a simple process too. Just put them in your ears and it'll say that it's paired. Again, it's super simple. And then when you're done, you just drop them in the case. That simple. The carrying case is a fingerprint magnet in literally the same size as the Apple AirPods. The flip cover is not as sturdy as the AirPods, but the buds are really stuck in there. Trying to remove them could be awkward, but it isn't impossible. But I don't think that's a bad thing. The lights on the front are pretty cool because they tell you which buds are charging and which ones aren't. And when these red lights turn off, that means that the buds are charged. 
The case has four lights on the bottom to let you know how charged the case is. Simply open the case and it'll tell you how much of a charge is left, which is pretty cool. I'm not a fan of the outside branding. I kind of wish it was on the inside rather than the outside, but it makes sense. There's not a lot of room in here. The micro USB is on the bottom and upside down if you think about it, but that's not a huge deal. USB-C would have been cool, but they do have other cases with USB-C. I would keep this case in my pocket either alone or near my phone, and here are the scratches that I picked up. This is after two weeks of usage, by the way. The charge lasts a while. I guess if the buds are uncomfortable, it does give you time to throw them on the charger and let your ears recover. The stated times on Roken's site are very accurate. Honestly, if the charge lasts longer than 12 hours with this case, that's really good. It may be an issue for some on long plane rides, but if you have smaller ears, keeping these buds in your ears for 12 hours would be terrible. For truly wireless buds, 3-5 to five hours on a single charge is really good. And putting them in the case will give you about 20-30% to 30 in just 5 minutes of charging. A full charge will take an hour, though it feels quicker than that. I also noticed that the right bud seems to die quicker. I don't know why, but charging this is super easy and it's not that big of a deal. While using it on Android phones, I noticed that the battery does drain quicker. I used this for an entire hour on the iPhone 7 and the batteries dropped to 95% on the left ones and 90% on the right ones. I don't get it. That's like an estimated 13 hours on a single charge, just from the earbuds alone. As for the charging case, after 3 or 4 hours of usage, the charging case was left with half of its charge, which isn't that bad. In total, I got maybe 12 hours with mixed Android and iOS usage. To fully charge the case, it took me 1 hour and 38 minutes, which is way quicker than the 150 minutes Roken claims. Overall, these are nice, but they're not nice enough. The lower quality when connected to an Android device is very strange, as I've never seen this happen on any other wireless headphones. Especially the static sound. At less than $100, these are pretty good for what they are, assuming that you have an iOS device. And if you need more of a charge, $10 will get you a battery case that's over two times bigger. And it's a nicer looking case. These are very convenient, but not the best sounding. I mean, for the price, I expected more, but getting truly wireless anything is really difficult right now, so I can respect the pricing. They look and technically sound better than the AirPods because of the noise insulation. To me, these are more practical. Just know that your mileage may vary depending on whether you're using an Android or an iOS device. I'm probably going to return these, but that doesn't mean that you should. For me, I'm just going to stick to my Aptex capable Anchor Soundcore Curves. And that's all I wanted to talk about. Hopefully this video helped you decide if these are worth it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below or on Twitter at Matt of RWR. And feel free to follow me on the social media listed above. Subscribe to my channel so you can see more review videos like this as well as some repair videos. And hit that bell button to let YouTube know that you're serious. Thanks for watching.